This is episode 10 of the Expert's Guide to Empires and Puzzles. Nittany Line Roar here, and we're going to talk about war strategy. Successful wars take teamwork and selflessness on the part of everybody. Um, the more the alliance works together and the less they go rogue, the more you're going to win. So today I'm going to talk about popular war strategies in general. I'm not going to talk about ours at Extreme Panda specifically because I'd like to keep that a secret a little bit. Um, but I'm going to talk about the popular ones I've seen so that you can think about for you and your alliance which one works for you. So there's a couple of main strategies out there. Um, first is the CYOM strategy. And uh, second is the WAVES strategy. So the CYOM strategy stands for Clean Your Own Mess. Um, and basically that's a strategy that's a free-for-all uh, where if you fail a one-shot, uh, you're responsible for your own cleanup. And there's some pros to that. Uh, the first is that there's no ceiling on the number of points the Alliance can earn. So, you know, theoretically, if you all get one-shots, you, you're gonna, you can get a perfect score. Um, the cons are that the floor can be quite low, though. So, like, for example, like, what if somebody fails on their last flag? Then if everybody's only cleaning their own messes, who's going to get that? Um, that requires a lot of selflessness on the part of, of the Alliance to do. And can you get everyone to on that page to be like, you know what? I haven't missed any, but I will, you know, I've only gotten one shots up to this point, but I'll clean your mess. I'll go out of my way to do that. that like, it's really hard to get people to do that. So, um... What I like about the CYOM strategy is that it's simpler. Um, people can get on and hit whenever they want to, whenever it's good for their schedule. It's easier on the alliance uh, as a whole. Uh, this might be a good strategy for alliances that want to be competitive in wars, but just have you know people all all around the world, or um, you know it's hard to get everyone on at the same time, or to follow a, a singular strategy. The other strategy requires a lot more teamwork and time restriction and that is attacking in waves so first to set this up let me talk about targets um, in, in any wave strategy usually the alliance is choosing targets at the beginning we have like war generals who uh, will go in and they're going to pick targets they think are easier um, usually between 10 to 15 of the weakest targets on the team and then they post them and in waves uh, you go in and you kill only those targets. Um, so let me talk about, because there's a few sub-strategies to this one um, that I've seen. And so the first one is uh, Reset, Targets, Targets, Barrage. And in Reset, Targets, Targets, Barrage, what happens is the war starts, the targets are chosen. Everybody goes in and they pummel the defense. They get one reset. So immediately the board resets and then they only go after the targets after that. So after one reset, they hit the targets and then they stop and they wait. And then when those targets respond, they hit them again and then they stop and they wait until those targets respond one more time and then they barrage and they just, you know, use the rest of their flags. So again, that's reset, targets, targets, barrage. Another one, uh, probably can only be used by really top level alliances uh, because it takes being able to use flags very very efficiently and that is reset targets reset targets barrage this one can be really really powerful if uh, you don't have a lot of failed one shots typically so basically you go in you reset the board right away and then you hit only the targets and, and wait so after one reset the targets are killed, you wait for them to respawn, then you go in and you kill everybody again, and then the targets. And then you wait until they respawn, and then you do a barrage. Um, and then lastly, uh, a simpler one is just targets, targets, barrage. And basically what this one is, is when the war starts, the targets are chosen, and you basically hit only those targets and let them respawn until uh, there's about nine hours left in the war. And then after that, everybody just comes in and barrages uh, when they can make it. Um, so those are a couple of the different types of attack strategies you can use. You might want to consider uh, which one works for your alliance, either clean your own mess or the waves. Um, a couple of notes. Uh, within these strategies, 
you want to be efficient with your flags. So take a couple of notes on who the heavy hitters are and who are the people who don't have as deep of rosters and, and need to do a lot of cleanup. Um, so the heavy hitters. Some alliances uh, assign them to hit the toughest opponents during the reset or barrages um, to help your team be more successful in resetting the boards. There's not a lot of there's not as many cleanups left, um, but because the heavy hitters are hitting tougher opponents, they often leave cleanup behind. Um, but these heavy hitters may also be assigned to wait until the end of the war to see how much they're needed to win. I've I've definitely seen this before too, where like the three heaviest hitters are waiting until the last like two hours of the war. They calculate how much the team still needs to win so they can decide whether they need to do more one shots or if they can just do some one shots and cleans. Um, that's a really nice strategy for being able to manage the ebbs and the flows of the, the war. Um, but then you have some players who don't have deep rosters and they need to do a lot of cleanup. This is really useful for the heavy hitters when, when unfortunately it's not working out for them and they leave some cleanup behind. Uh, to get those resets, you really need the people without deep rosters to go in and clean up those messes. And so this is where it does take some selflessness on the part of people in the alliance. Because you got to set your ego aside. Um, I've seen people with thin rosters just try and go in there to do six one-shots so they can feel like they fit in. And that is just not the way to have an effective war at all. Um, so you're really going to need to identify who should probably be doing more cleanup and just... If you're a cleanup person, you need to monitor the war the whole time, like throughout the 24 hours is going on, and just wait for cleanup to show up, and then hop on and clean it up as soon as you possibly can so that you get your resets on time, uh, so that uh, the barrages, can you can get the battlefield turned over as much as possible. Um, and if you do that, with your heavy hitters and your cleanup people, you're going to find that you start to have more efficient wars. All right, so let's talk about building attack teams for a moment. Um, now, first of all, I'm not going to go into depth with it because I already made uh, an expert's video on that. If you want to watch how to build attack teams, go watch episode six for more details on individual teams. But in war, one of the unique things is that you can't reuse heroes. So... If you can see here, I have some of mine grayed out. Since you can't reuse heroes, uh, you have more team building restrictions as you get down to like your fourth team, your fifth team, your sixth team. Um, one thing I talked about in episode six was the different types of attack teams like 3-2, 4-1, or mono. Uh, these work really well in war. Um, there are some other strategies like 2-2-1 two, two, and one, or 3-1-1, one, and one, but I don't usually like those strategies because when you introduce three different colors into an attack team, um, theoretically, it takes way more matches to get all the specials to go off. Um, so in 3, 2, 4, 1, or mono, you can really focus on a color or two and not have to worry about any of the other colors. Um, so when building these teams, um, you want to look for synergy in the attack teams. Like a really good synergy right here is Liana, Liana. Evelyn. I usually want a cleanser when I'm fighting wars because the defenses have a lot of like grave makers and Zaliens and things like that. Um, and then like 3-2 is what I like most of the time, although I've been finding a lot of success with 4-1 against the purple tanks. Um, and uh, there's, there's a couple different philosophies on building these attack teams too. One is to preset them basically you go in and you decide what teams you're going to use in war beforehand you already have them written out and um you just go in you pick a target that, that team would be good for uh and then another idea is to just build as you go and basically you just take a look at a defense and then go in there and build one based on the strengths and weaknesses that that team has uh, i used to do build as you go most of the time but I've been favoring preset a little bit more now because I can practice with the preset teams and raids. I can purposefully take those, especially lower war teams, war teams number four and five, in against 
uh, unideal matchups and raids and practice them. So, you know, one thing about war is it's typically harder because you've got uh, arrows and, and field aid and attack boost. And so, like, actual raids are easier. So I might purposefully go take a red team against a blue tank just to practice the difficulty of of fighting in a war. Um, so I, I do favor preset teams now uh, and practicing with them. You know, a note on 3, 2, 4, 1, or mono, what's better? Um, as a leader of an alliance, some alliances have different philosophies on this. My, my thing is, like, this is a game I like people to have fun, and... Um, I want them to use the strategy that's going to work for them best. So I just recommend that people go into the raids and practice their war teams, you know, set some up and, and practice them and see which one works for them best. Um, I, I do feel like mono has a ceiling. Um, it is a gamble, and it's harder to build synergy, and the troops are spread thinner. Some people have told me that they find that mono works better for them, and I believe them. Um, but I do think that there is a cap to the success that you can have with mono simply because of the boards. Like, sometimes the board is just going to suck. And if you have a mono team, then you typically end up hitting the opponent for, like, nothing. And that's a real bummer. Um, and that makes it really hard on the rest of the alliance. So I think... You know, if you've really practiced mono and you know how to play that board so that you can win 70% of the time or more, um, then that's okay. But if you're, if you're not hitting 70% of the time, you really need to take a look at practicing some other strategy, I think. Because I think the cap on a mono team is, is about, you know, when I look at the data, it's actually about 62% success average um, for an average player. Uh, and... Uh, there are plenty of players, when I look at, you know, when we keep data, there are plenty of players that hit over 70%. So if you're a mono player hitting under 70%, you really need to think about changing up because that strategy is not working for you. Okay, just a couple of final tips. Um, I think a lot of people miss this. This has nothing to do with war strategy, but um, check your teams or what heroes you have left with the icon in the upper left instead of like going in and reserving teams. So see if I click on this gear, I can click on attack team and look at what I have left. Okay, do that, because sometimes when I see people just checking their teams, they just go in here and they click on a team, and then they start looking at what they have, but now they've reserved the team, so right now I've, I'm blocking this team, and none of my teammates can come in and take it. The other danger, and I've seen people do this in the past, is they go in to just look at some heroes, and then they accidentally click on the wrong button, and they go into a battle with like one hero. <laughs> Whoops. Um, so please use this feature that Small Giants games gave us. Um, also, the, the other thing is when building an attack team, you, you need to review the enemy team um, with the button in the lower left. So if I go, yes, I'm going to reserve it again. If I'm going in to um, build an attack team like this, And I want to make sure that I'm all set up and I'm good to go. I can click on that uh, enemy button down there to make sure that this has good synergy. And as I look at this one, this is okay. Um, I could probably, I could probably run with this one against this team. Uh, I just got to be careful of Kunch in there on the right since I'm taking a couple of purples. Uh, but that lets me check the troop level and what heroes I'm going against. And if my heroes match up well with theirs, I've got a couple of dispellers and a cleanser. So that would be good. Okay, I'm going to try not to click fight there. <laughs> um, and then lastly, uh, one tip is for field aid in particular. It feels like you have to fight those battles differently than the other types of wars. So when fighting in field aid... Focus on killing the biggest threat one at a time. Typically, it takes saving up a couple of hero specials and making sure you kill a hero dead before that field aid goes off. Um, so you, you kill one hero, then you recharge, and then you kill another hero, and then you recharge. Um, and that way, you're going to be more successful in taking the opponent out. You can't just do what you do for raids or other wars where you, you do some tile damage and then maybe you hit them with a special and they get kind of low and then you finish them off with tiles. That just doesn't work in field aid. So um, yeah, save up your hero specials, then use them all at once. Okay, 
All right, that was everything that I have for you about wars. Um, certainly feel free to comment, add any other ideas that you might have or war strategies you think are successful. Um, and uh, thanks for watching.